But there's one thing real quick before we start. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to start the, the seminar. The huge chant. No. The, I'm sorry. The huge chant. We're going to start the seminar with a huge chant. And I'll open with a quote from the Tiger's Fang by Petter's Ask. Quote. Chant the holy word a million times. Yes, a hundred million times and beyond the count until they become such a part of you that the chanting goes on and on into the vast worlds with them humming in you. May the blessings be. May the blessings be. I'd like to welcome everybody <laughs> to the 2023 Vardenkar Worldwide Seminar in Peru and also coordination with the Holistica Healing Congress and which we're also going to be talking with some of them also later this evening and the, the title of this spiritual seminar came to us from higher initiate eighth initiate in Vardenkar Leonard Penn and which came to him from the masters and the Varden. The title is the Secrets of Spiritual Healing, which is a, a beautiful, beautiful title, because in in Vardenkar, we transcend the lower forms of healing, such as just psychic, just physical level 
just the mental level and so forth. But all levels, physical, astral, causal, mental, etheric, and soul, pure soul, and the God worlds. So we're going to start with the first, the first topic. It's going to be a, a panel discussion. <laughs> and um, can we pause just a moment? Do you want it to be a spiritual healing with the light and sound of Hugh Ray, or do, you, or would it be better if we did before, which is the secret spiritual reasons behind illness? Moving closer to God. Uh, the illness one. Okay. So, uh, where the topic of this panel is secret spiritual reasons behind illness and moving closer to the Hugh Ray. So, first on the panel is Sh uh, Sean Doucette. Nice to be here. Thanks, Heather G. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, the, the topic is secret spiritual reasons behind illness. I was just looking for my Well, there's, I guess uh, the question is, what kind of illness are we talking about? If it's an illness of the lower bodies, then there must be a cause. There's cause and effect. Yes. Sort of like karma. But then you look beyond karma, and there's also spiritual reasons for things happening. And that's not always obvious on the surface. And uh, there's lots of examples of that, including what's happened in the last year. I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen which can appear very negative and detrimental, but then when you look under the surface, there's something else happening that isn't obvious just by appearances. And that's why we say in Vardenkar that appearances are deceiving. and and they're not reliable. <laughs> it's not reliable to use just your eyes and your ears and your um, smell to try to understand things. Sometimes there were challenges that were occurring, like for instance on our trip, and something would go wrong. Uh, something with finances would fall through, an account would be blocked and so forth. But you, you have, as a soul, you were very sort of psychic and you have a good sense of knowingness and so in going in and contemplating those things you as well as I we would find out that the Varden created a delay or a problem because there was a hidden spiritual reason mm -hmm. you know for example we had this emergency where we had to literally <laughs> to feed from the place that we lived. And later on we found out, well wait a minute, it wasn't just merely an emergency of itself. There was a spiritual thing that the Varden was trying to mm. uh, trying to communicate that that we needed to I needed to go in a new direction in certain ways in terms of outflow and service and in terms of uh Vardkar. And it was like a way the Varden was pushing me in that new direction. So sometimes when somebody has an illness, for example, or a, a difficulty, which is like a karmic runoff, it's because the Varden itself, the light and sound of God, the voice of God, or the Hure, is sometimes opening another door that maybe we didn't expect. Like I, I know a Vardenist recently couple of artists who said their, their job, they lost their job. And then what it was, was it was almost like the Varden wanted to open and not close one door so that another door could open. But did the person have the, does the person have the uh, awareness that when there's a problem, whether it's in Vardenkar or their lives or their health, do they have the perception and the awareness to go on the inner? and find the real spiritual reason for it. What is Divine Spirit attempting to 
bring out to give them a gift from God. Sometimes, um, for example, for myself, years ago I had a very serious back injury, and this this was thousands of years of of a karma, a burden that I was carrying on my back, literally, for thousands of years, and the Murgatma and the Hure, the Barden, was helping me work out that painful karma through a painful illness. It was, <laughs> it was so bad, I was a high school English teacher, I'm sorry, middle school English teacher, and I would, I would come into work uh, every day, Every day, early in the morning, I wake up 5.30 a.m., do my spiritual exercise. I was exhausted, barely got any sleep. And they didn't pay me for about three months, so I was barely eating. I was just eating little inexpensive chips for 25 cents. Mm -hmm. I mean, ridiculous. But I, I became so, so ill with my spine that I would hunch over the desk to try to hold myself up and 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 grimace with with try not to grimace from pain. And uh, at one point, I was in a classroom. The 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 students they were doing a play, Tuck Everlasting, which is about uh, child ch children that live have eternal life. And mm -hmm. and the the class roared with laughter as one little boy put on a, a goldie, golden Goldilocks wig. And, but I was reeling with pain over my desk. And I went to a masseuse in that evening, and he, he made it so that it was ten times worse. My, I looked in the mirror and I was horrified because I, my body looked like a pretzel, like severe scoliosis and degeneration. And I went to the doctor, and the doctor, uh, the, uh, conventional uh, doctor, he told me that uh, I had very severe spinal degeneration from the x-rays and that there was no hope of recovery, I'd be crippled for the rest of my life. The only option was to have a surgery. But I was given a message from Divine Spirit that if I did that, it would be a, a huge mistake. I would be, it would be, it basically I would leave the world, <laughs> leave the world. So I was, I did inner guidance instead. Spiritual, spiritual healing is about, it's not about directing things. There are some chilas who, when I spoke of mold making, are actually abusing it. They're actually doing magic or even black magic because they're trying to, the person, the individual is trying to bend spirit to their own will rather than rather than allow the Varden to do its will, the Hure and the Murgatma, to fall, it's basically the will of Hure. Well, anyway, <laughs> what, what occurred was that all of a sudden certain things, because I was patient and because I kept working on the inner, eventually what happened was all of a sudden out of nowhere, on the outer, a friend I hadn't spoken to in years suddenly called me on the phone. Uh, he was in a, a spiritual group and he, know, he knew a special chiropractor, uh, a special uh, chiropractor that also dealt with the cranium and so forth. And even after months, I went there by plane, by wheelchair, and I slid into his office instead of walking. And even after months of working with him, and his special techniques. I, he said that I was the worst case that he had ever seen. And his friend who was a surgeon said that, that my one shot was to, was to have a year of bed rest. I was very crippled and I was in agony. It was so much pain that it was like being in surgery without anesthesia and I never took any painkillers. So, <laughs> Anyway, through this process, I, I did things to work with my subconscious mind. I did things to have uh, what you call, they call it, the neg in the negative sense, they call it mind control. Uh, the spiritual kind of mind control is controlling your mind 
so that instead of having thoughts of worry and doubt and focusing on the negative and I focused on life as I felt it was spiritually and on all levels and and a year later not only that but I had to heal on every level including the um that not just the mental level but the physical level I changed my diet and I had a, a enormous amount of minerals colloidal minerals like many ounces three times a day and so I had to change on all levels, including causal level. I faced the past life reason for it. And I saw that in a past life, I was a, a blonde-haired Christian medieval knight riding on a horse. And that I had, I had a, a difficult, painful death in a battle. And, and it related to my lower back. Um, you know, there was a big spiked ball that, that came from the other night, and a, psy a psychic friend of mine saw that there was this hole uh, in my aura in the lower back that looked like the shape of it, and so what it was was I, I had to also heal the causal level too, the past life issue, which was that, or the hidden spiritual reason behind the injury was that I had chosen a negative attitude or reality that I believed that God did not support me. And what is the lower back? The lower spine is the sort of the support of the entire body that holds it all up and together. So when you believe that God in the universe does not support you, it's sort of like that is a detrimental and unresponsible attitude to have. So once I healed that attitude, and once I took responsibility for my diet to make it build instead of destroy, and once I took responsibility for the mental level controlling my thought body, and once I took responsibility on a spiritual level to do the inner work, to do my spiritual practices and not waver in spite of an enormously painful situation. So knowing the hidden spiritual reason behind illness that it is it is spiritual that the negative power and the hue ray is testing us to see if we if we are worthy of rising to the next level yeah that's a very poignant story <laughs> it depicts um, exactly um, the whole problem of illness which is really an opportunity you know it's about awareness it's about responsibility it's about in Vartikar, it's about leaning on the inner master uh, total reliance on the inner master and um, the, the problem of relying on appearances is it appears to some that there's no living Varden master <laughs> because they're used to seeing allergy you know or hearing his talks and and um, but Fubi Kwanza is the living Varda master, and you can go within and connect with him. He's a real being. And I think that's very important for people to know, partly because it affects people's choices and decisions and their sense of knowingness. If they're not getting a real knowingness about things, then they'll come to false conclusions. Just like this seminar, it's like, uh, why are we in Peru? You know, what is the reason? And uh, um, for a while, I, I couldn't uh, understand it myself, but I think it's because, um, well, it's the will of the hue ray, for one thing. And the reason for it is not clear at first, but then over time it will become clearer. But maybe I shouldn't go, go into it right now. But, uh, but I think it brings to mind just total reliance on the inner master and getting um, 
the answer is on the inner. Yes. Guru, it's, it's sort of like sometimes when things went wrong, at one point Vardakar was under attack in various ways, and I'm not going to go into it all now, but it was very severe, and because it was trying to destroy the high path. And, and even related to finances, we had accounts broken into cards that wouldn't work, and we literally were in another country with no money and no way of things like this, no way of getting in t contact with certain chilos who were working on the mailing and so forth. So there were certain difficulties that arose, but there's sort of a reason for everything. And when people instead focus on just negativity that the negative power is creating, and they let that overwhelm them, then they don't get to the real reason behind things. I had one, one chila that it, I was really concerned about because they were getting disillusioned. Like, you know, they didn't get the mailing for several months and they, they had like, certain problems that arose. But instead of trusting social sources, which are often the cow power influencing, this individual went on the inner planes. And Phoebe Quans, like you said about total reliance, they got this guidance from Phoebe Quans, and it was a great relief because then they learned why all this was happening. And they were kind of excited about the future mm -hmm. of Vardenkar because they realized that they realized that things are not as they appear. That sometimes something that appears to be a challenge is actually just a stepping stone to the next higher level. And that they had to trust. And to trust the Margatma. Because sometimes when, when people are they're sort of like focused on worry and complaining and fault finding and looking for think problems on the outer, what they are not seeing is that, for example, you know, Phoebe Kwans, who's the Margatma the Living Born Master, are are they going to doubt that he, that he as as a master is not creating a wonderful future with Vardenkar? Are they going to doubt? and create illusions that, that I, as an outer Varden master, am not going to responsibly carry things out in Vardenkar, even in the midst of great setbacks. It's sort of like, if we, if we just trust social sources or sources that are on the astral and physical planes, then we are, the person well as may join a religion or a psychic path because the whole point of Vardenkar is to work with the ancient masters like Reba Zartaris, Yabo Sakabi, and Phoebe Quans, and Alan G and myself, the Varden and the Hure. The whole point of it is, like you said, to have that inner reliance. <laughs> A lot of people don't, some Chilas don't know that about related to the mailing, that the cow power was really trying to destroy Vardenkar. And the most recent person who was doing the mailing lost lost their job, and their bank and as we sent them funds, their bank account was closed. It's sort of like it's sort of like we have to find ways of transcending these obstacles and coming to a solution. Yeah. Um. And it's beautiful when uh, you actually, you know, get in touch with Fubi Quants because um, you get more of a sense of what's happening, you know, instead of relying on the lower senses. And um, there's something I was thinking of recently about how we take it for granted that we can get these answers on the inner. And it's really, <laughs> um, I look back at my life and think, you know, what would my life be like if I could have got these answers on the inner earlier in my life, it would have been, I would have had a very different life. But I guess we're prepared in a certain way for a reason. Um, well, there's something else you can say, and um... I've noticed that a lot of, there are a number of Vardenists, some Vardenists, different Vardenists, who shared that they were suddenly this year having these very difficult situations with healing, like they were ill or or they had sudden sudden difficulties and changes such as a loss of a job or a certain challenge like uh, losing a relationship or 
going through some kind of painful karmic circumstances. And what it was was, it was funny because it, it happens to be along the, the line of this theme this year, which is the spiritual healing, the secrets of spiritual healing. Yeah. And so it's almost sort of like the Hugh Ray is opening doors for Chilas to work out enormous amounts of karma, some of them thousands of years, like my back injury. And that, that healing in working with the Margatma and the Barden and the Hure, it clears the way so that the individual is prepared for the higher levels like self-realization and beyond God-realization. Yeah, and uh, one doesn't have, like everything is kind of backwards in this world, isn't it? Where um, uh, things that appear to be in order can be kind of uh, detrimental to soul, and things that can be chaotic can potentially mean great things <laughs> yes. for soul, and that's not how we typically perceive things. And one only has to look back at our history and religions and how things become distorted over time through that lack of inner communication with God, Hure, and Magatma. Yes. An example would be a Buddhist monk who upon the disease of a soul or a, a body. Um, you can share what experience. Uh, yeah, uh, like the Buddhist monk, uh, well there was a recent experience that we had where we found this dying cat. It was similar to a previous experience I'd had where I was finished a seminar and there was this dying bird and it was being attacked and then I, you know, I was trying to figure out what to do and I, I started chanting the hue sound and then it just folded out its wings and I, I could tell that soul left the body. And the same thing happened, peace. yeah, it was very peaceful and beautiful. And the same thing happened recently with the cat who was dying and we found it and we just immediately wanted to help it. <laughs> It was laying on, in the parking lot, a very mm. cute little infant kitten yeah. with golden fur. Was it yeah. orange golden fur? Yeah. And beautiful little eyes, but it was struggling for life. Mm. My first instinct was to do the same thing to the bird, but there was people around and I, I guess I felt <laughs> put off by that. So we took it to a hospital, but then Later we realized, or you mainly first realized, but we had to go back and get this cat and bring it to a mountain. Well, we, um, they showed us pictures of the kitten in the veterinarian hospital, and right next to the kitten they had lined up a whole battery of syringes that they were going to poke it with. They mm. were very rough with the cat, kind of like aggressively rough to the point that it was scary. And we realized, it was like the Varden was saying that that was not what was supposed to happen. We were not supposed to leave it there. Right. Um, yeah. So we went back and we got the cat and we brought it to the mountaintop. And uh, we just put it on this rock and wrapped in a blanket and we started chanting you. And, and you could see its mouth convulsing, like you could see soul leaving. Immediately it was, um, it was right away. It's like it, it went, the kitten, the beautiful little soul, went in peace. Yeah. Instead of feeling pain, it's like the Varden, it just rose up on the Varden, the light and sound, and you could see it leaving out of its mouth. Out and, of its mouth. <laughs> yeah. Which is interesting. I've heard people talk about that, but I actually saw it because you could practically see it leaving out of the mouth. And then after that, there was a there was a Buddhist monk with us, and well, no, he wasn't a monk. Sorry, yeah. he was a Buddhist. He said something very odd. Well, we were helping the cat go with Fubi <laughs> or the yeah, Varden, yeah. and then he said that he was praying for the cat to have a good reincarnation, which was. He said no. He said immediate reincarnation. Oh, like, immediate! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was immediate. Not a good <laughs> reincarnation <laughs> and a good body or something yeah. and a, a good life, but. It was really contradictory because Buddhists, they do admit that suffering in samsara is, is the wheel of reincarnation. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, they'll pray for a quick reincarnation, <laughs> which to me is uh, strange because um, if you know suffering, uh, these lower worlds are pure suffering, then why would you pray for a reincarnation in these lower worlds? It's, um, it's interfering, for one thing, with that soul. 
another, it's it doesn't make sense, you know, spiritually. One one thing uh, it would be nice if you mentioned too is um, regarding when you were introducing Pobian, you said some important things. You might have also acknowledged me on the outer. I think some people have lost um, the right attitude, including sincerity sometimes. And they don't... Uh, well, it starts with basic respect, and your name is Heather G to the Chilas, not Heather. Yeah. So it starts with things like that. It's simple, but it shows that they have respect. Usually in the past, whenever anyone stopped calling Alan, Alan G, it was because they had succumbed to the cow, and they were leaving the pie path, and they didn't respect the Margatma, the inner or outer master. And also, when people, when those individuals began to focus on Alan G's human flaws and his human body, and looking, searching for negativity and confirmation, they almost are getting confirmation for what they believe because they're almost manifesting what they expect. And then, if they focus on that too hard, it becomes like black magic. And mm. recently there were, there, were, there were a couple chilas, their minds were poisoned by an individual, then sort of like spreading uh, gossip. And then the, it, like they were focusing on the negative and manifesting what they expected. It's a form of black magic. And instead of seeing the opportunity just to heal or unfold spiritually, they they basically, instead of gains, they move backwards. Right, and uh, yes. Well, the interim master role is a real role, and some people are trying to undermine it or bypass it and thinking that it doesn't mean anything. But it, it's well, a real thing. Well, interim master is a needed uh, role. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I should probably explain some of this. I was intending to explain some of it in the, uh, one of the wisdom notes. Even though this is a little off topic, I'll bring it up. Fobi Kwan, we recently, uh, I recently gave someone an initiation, beautiful initiate, beautiful Chila. All the Chilas are. And they began to speak about how, about how there wasn't a master. <laughs> and they were looking forward to someday being a master. And I almost wanted to laugh because Fubi Kwans is the living board and master of the Murgatma, and he's very ancient and a magnificent, brilliant channel of God. And I am also a board and master, and I've been a living board and master in past lives. But one thing that I want to explain that is, you know, there are certain individuals who see me as merely sort of like the the widow of a master who died, who mm. just happens to be hanging out and, you know, like every now and then writing a few things. <laughs> but mm. that's not, that's not the role. Right. Actually, I am not a normal interim master. I am here for a special purpose, an important purpose. I was sent down because of, of certain things that need to be done in this time frame. Uh, I don't, because of the law of silence, I can't talk about certain things. But it is urgent and important. And, and the certain chilas who have this, this notion that they can simply bypass me or ignore me or try to force their way using black magic into a, a position of power. They are focusing on the ego and not on serving the Hure, doing the Hure's will. And they don't understand that they are interfering with what the Hure needs done at this time. I was sent here to help with an emergency. Emergency related to Barden Car and other things, and they are interfering with that. And what it's best is it's best to just be a pure channel of God and focus on one's spiritual unfoldment. 
and realize that at this time, which is a time of healing, because we heal and we work out all the lower world's karma in order to, in order to reach self-realization. Mm, yeah, it's uh, ironic actually that illness in the lower bodies is the illusion, I and mean, the real illness is spiritual. It's yes. reincarnation. Yes. And that's something we don't think about is the spiritual, everything relates that's related to soul, the spiritual is more more true or more real and the lower things are more illusion based. Paul G said that the worst disease is reincarnation. That that is actually a, a disease. An illness, uncontrollable reincarnation. And the Margatma is, is the key, the bridge, the door, mm. the cure. Yeah. Well, there's a. I just want to say that there was a quote from Alan G in one of the discourses. If I may share it, it was. Um, it might be on topic. It was that any chila who hasn't reached the fifth level of self-realization and above is a danger to themselves and to other chilas or to other people even. Yes. Mostly other chilas, and I think that was a very poignant thing to read <laughs> yeah. because um, it's something that we've seen a lot of in the last year when people start associating with each other it creates all kinds of problems Weird. One, of, one of the things which I found strange was that there were some chilas that were spiritually doing very very well they were soaring and I was within myself saying wow this person is going to reach self-realization with ease. This person is going to reach the higher levels with ease. But then I noticed almost immediately when we did a certain training online, which I broke a rule, I never should have done that, and certain individuals started to associate with each other and be more social, focus more social instead of spiritual, because social is more like religion, that almost immediately a lot of them started to degenerate spiritually and instead of moving forward they started taking steps back in certain areas. There were a few individuals that when they came together they had a very negative influence on each other. Mm -hmm. They infected the other person's mind with doubt and negativity. They would focus on things like that and then well, there, there were a couple people that because of these social interactions, they actually fell off the path. Mm. Because, it, it's my viewpoint, that these individuals are better off focusing less on the social and more on their spiritual unfoldment. Because they were actually a detriment to each other, some of them. And so, <laughs> there was one individual who was doing extremely well, who was, uh, who was serving spiritually, and then they made a new friend, a new friend, and then all of a sudden they became alienated from me. They didn't talk to me anymore, or associate with me anymore. They ha developed a negative attitude towards authority figures, not, not just me, but other beings, and their spiritual progress started to slip. So it's, it's really important that realize that Vardhankar is not religion and it's not about making lots of social connections and pulling people over to a poor viewpoint or a side. It's about unfolding spiritually and reaching the higher states of consciousness and returning to God. Right. It's not a, like a, a, a social party. Yeah. If Vardhankar becomes um, a cure for loneliness, then it's just a religion. Yeah. <laughs> because sometimes we need um, to be alone in order to have those challenges that are necessary for our own spiritual growth. And mm -hmm. if we just have an easy out outlet, like, oh, I'm going to contact that person, it's it becomes like a religion, and like an emotional crutch. Because usually people aren't associating for spiritual reasons, yeah. like a satsang. You know, a satsang is there uh, as a spiritual reason, it has a spiritual purpose. Um, I think peop that's not usually why people are trying to associate with one another. It's yeah. like social.
It was, it was sort of like an um, example of someone coming to the seminar and they were on their way to the seminar but their intentions were not spiritual, they were social. And because of that, it lowered the vibration, the consciousness, and it became something different. And because of that, because of that, and breaking the law of silence, it had to be rescheduled. Um, Food Bequans wanted it rescheduled. So in any case, we, we veered a little bit away from the topic of the secret reasons behind spiritual healing, but yet it was still on topic because mm -hmm. behind all these things is is the Murgatma and the Hure and the Varden, and that sometimes appearances are deceiving. What it seems to be a disadvantage can be a spiritual stepping stone to a higher level of consciousness. Because, for, for example, there were some individuals who received initiation. Sometimes before or after initiation we receive certain spiritual tests where the master will place doubts in the individual's mind to see what he will do with those doubts. Will he blindly trust things from this world or will he or will he actually go on the inner and have total reliance on the Murgatma and get the, the true answer? Not from the Cal, but from the Varden, the Murgatma, and the Hure. Yeah, things uh, have an appearance of what's normal and what's not normal, and it's like now is definitely a time where there's like a new normal, and I, I hate to use that expression <laughs> because it's been used uh, by negative beings, but but it's like a new normal, um, you know, seminars not being based in America or not uh, United States. I mean, that's like a new normal, <laughs> but yeah. I don't like to use that expression, but it's true. Well, actually, um, that you bring that up, <laughs> one of the things that is significant is a cer certain individuals were going to attend the seminar, and and sometimes things came up, or certain challenges arose. What people don't realize is that sometimes the negative power and the hure will give individuals tests to see what it is they value more. Are we, is the person willing to push past their comfort zone? Are they willing to decide between, between the things of this world or the things of the hure? And one example, I'm not saying someone has to go to the seminar, they don't have to go. Mm -hmm. But an example of that is in 2019, the worldwide seminar with Nida Zah, Alan G. Uh, one initiate was given a situation where she there was an extra training that just popped up for work. And she had to decide, was she going to go to the seminar to see Alan G or was she going to go to the work training? It wasn't something that was required, it was something that would be helpful for her job. She chose to go to the training for her job instead. She said, oh, you know, oh, I can always go next year or the year after. But what she didn't realize was that was the last time she could see Ellen G. And she missed it. It's like a door opened up and then closed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the Varden will do that, where an opportunity will open up like a doorway into another dimension and a higher level of consciousness. And are they going to step through or are they, are they going to let it close and miss it? And, and an example of that was that Sheila, that she had this opportunity to meet the living Varden Master this magnificent being Night is on the outer. And she let her pass her by because, because she didn't go on the inner and get the answer. She did what felt right to her mind, what felt right to her comfort zone. And so now when we have seminars that are outside the country more often, for some people that's a big leap of faith because that's not what they're accustomed to or what's comfortable or what's convenient. But, but it's sort of like it's sort of like we have to, for me myself, I've had to adapt to what the Varden wants of me. So, uh, 
I literally in Florida had to sort of flee my home because Warren Carr and I were under attack. I'm not saying that's happening now. I don't want to focus on that kind of reality. But it really, behind it all, the spiritual, one of the spiritual reasons was, and I saw the Varden video open up years ago showing me that I wouldn't be leaving the country, was that the Varden was asking me to go in a new direction. And it wasn't just because of negativity, there is a spiritual reason behind it. So being able to adapt and sometimes attend a seminar that's in a different place, it's... It's like participation in the, yeah. in the whole process of yeah. what Fubi, the will of the Hure, which is helping Vardenkar to be reborn or transform into something greater. Yes, and the uh, Chilas were told this year that Fubi Kwans actually organized this, this seminar, which is kind of um, exciting. He, he arranged it with, um, he arranged it among healers a healing seminar of the secrets of spiritual healing among healers in Peru. Individuals who practice certain healing modalities and and also are spiritual, they have an inner an inner awareness. <laughs> there was no coincidence that we came upon them and the likeliness is so small that we would just stumble upon these people who are kind of extraordinary in their own path, in their own way. Yeah. But um, the likeliness is so small, but Fubi um, arranged it, and we just ended up meeting them through somebody else. Yes. He, and as we were about to part and, and go to the next, our next destination, he invited us to be participants in his holistic healing congress among other spiritual beings that are spiritual healers. And so it was all it was all prearranged. We didn't have to to pay for a seminar space or make arrangements for the location. It was all set up for us because Fubi Kwan's pulled the strings and made it happen. <laughs> so so the next oh boy, let's see where are we? Should we pause it? Yeah, yes, let's roll. pause. Make sure maybe you can export it or not. Introducing in this next session, Gashaiza with the singing bowl and the sound current. We chant.
Welcome again to the uh, 2023 seminar in Peru. This is part two of the seminar. And I'm uh, doing a talk called Overcoming Lack of Loving Oneself as a Spiritual Being. And um, I remember for a long time I didn't really understand what that meant of loving oneself as a spiritual being. How do you love yourself as soul? And I think it requires a lot of contemplation and understanding of what that means because um, it's the path of Vardhankar. It, it requires uh, a certain degree of um, resilience, knowingness, uh, love, I guess divine love. They say that you can't really join Vardhankar until you get rid of all creeds. Um, you're supposed to let go of your cherished beliefs, opinions, and and so forth. Um, because those are the things that the human consciousness believes that it needs, it clings on to, in order to sustain the ego. <laughs> and um, spiritual confidence is um, the path, I think, to loving oneself, and that requires uh, listening, you know, doing the spiritual exercises, of course, and and um, a degree of realization, I suppose, as well. Um, you know, self-realization is a realization, you know. I think um, things that hold us back, the obvious one is the five passions of the mind, which is, um, you know, anger, lust, greed, attachment, vanity. And these are the things that corrupt uh, soul in the lower embodiments and keep soul clinging to the lower worlds. There's an illusion of certain needs and things that maybe we don't need and we have to let go of. And then other times it's not letting go, it's holding on. It's um, It depends on what you need at that moment, spiritually. A spiritual confidence is maybe not obvious at first because... Um, People know what uh, human confidence is, and we might have human confidence in spades, and then it can also appear like spiritual confidence because people think that that's spiritual confidence, that it's all the same thing. A oh, charismatic personality. There's some people right. that are really very... Um, yeah. They have it in spades. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but you can also pretend to have spiritual confidence and fool oneself as well. But uh, spiritual confidence is really, you're learning to rely on the inner master. You're learning to get your answers because of a need for it. You have to have a new need, which is not in the human self, in the spiritual self. So I, I find that a lot of times people will develop spiritual confidence and challenges and, and things that, um, things appearing to fall apart in their life and and usually that's because they have a new need for it. There's a, a need is developed to have this uh, knowingness and spiritual confidence that the inner master is prompting them to have by forcing them to rely on the inner because it's difficult or impossible at times to to figure out the answer just with your human mind. It just doesn't work. Um, there's been plenty of times, like on this um, last year, we've been traveling and and doing things, and of course you make mistakes now and again too. Um, but for the most part, it's you you realize how important it is to contemplate uh, things that are important, like decisions, and try to find out what it is that the Vard and, and Hure Margatma wants you to do and learning the distinction between this little self who has different wants and desires and needs with what is the need and desire of the Hure and Vardhan and Margatma. And uh, that's the path to being more selfless. And so loving oneself as soul, I mean, that's, a, that's one part of it. <laughs> the other part is uh, there's other things that are like we judge ourselves. Can you give examples, like examples of, of how your loving yourself as soul has changed you? Because I remember when you first started on the path, 
you lacked spiritual confidence in yourself. And then, and then I, I, the Varden through me, reminded you that you had powerful knowingness and you had powerful inner awareness. Alan, she commented that you're, that Sean is very psychic and very um, strong on inner guidance. Mm. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, the psychic part. <laughs> well, like he a, meant he meant like spiritual guidance y- and psychic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when you said I had knowingness, then yes, it it was uh, actually life changing because I had self doubt. You know, I doubted that I had knowingness. You know, uh, maybe I'm one of those people that lack knowingness, and for whatever reason, I didn't realize it. Maybe because I didn't uh, love myself enough. But I realized it, and then I was like, oh my god, wow, you know, I do. I, I realized that's, that was knowingness. Um, and after that, it changed uh, a lot of things, because I was able to uh, realize that um, soul is always there, the master is always there with you and, and guiding you. And it's not something you have to strain yourself to to get because it's it's like you have to expect that God Hure wants you to, to have what you need right now and when you have that expectation then it's it it comes to be it was like when you after you were told that it was suddenly like I would read an article by you where you would say something and it was like wow completely indifferent it, mm. it was not a little self it was soul it was a Varden and it would come through so powerfully. Mm. And when individuals trust themselves as soul, not as their ego or their outer self. That's mm. why some people doubt you. They look at your outer self and they're not seeing the their, their true you, which is soul, mm. the bar. Well, I've lived you know, without human confidence for many years. Yeah. But um, you know, spiritual confidence is far more important. I think you need to have a balance. But, but the main thing is not focusing on that so much. Because when you focus on spiritual confidence or the the spiritual part of getting your answers on the inner, then the things that you need will come to you in time, and it's divine timing. You don't have to try to change yourself like overnight. It doesn't usually uh, work too well that way. This is why we have spiritual exercises. This is why we seek guidance from the ancient masters and from Fubi Kwans, is because of the fact that these lower bodies are not perfect. And they don't receive um, the answers perfectly, and it takes time. Sometimes the things that you need uh, take time, and think change will happen uh, given enough, uh, I guess, uh, diligence and um, whatever qualities that you particularly need. Everyone might be different there. But one thing I noticed was um, some people have a belief that if you're going to do a talk or write an article, that you have to be the most original, the most exciting, the most fresh. And and it, it's not saying that they're, what they do is bad. It's just that the concept that um, you're repeating, because you're using charged words, you're using certain language that sounds like, you know, the master used that, so they're just copying. And, and that's actually... <laughs> it's an illusion, because um, every time you use the charged words and and practice uh, the path, it's really, it is original and it is fresh. It's just how you see it. And how you see it will change when you start to polarize yourself to the God worlds instead of um, these lower expectations and lower uh, human ideas. Because um, it's not as important what is said, it's just the consciousness that it's said with. Um, it's true. And it's beautiful what you said about polarizing yourself with the God worlds. That's very, very important. Mm. Yeah, I mean, loving oneself as a spiritual being, it can be a process. It can be a process of even uh, understanding what that means, because I didn't understand it. And I still, um, I'm still learning it. I'm not like, you know, I'm not a master. I'm not at your level, I'm not at Alan G's level. I'm not at the level of the ancient Varden masters, but um, it's just knowing that uh, everything comes in the right time, and and that's a beautiful thing too, you know, trusting that, trusting.
holding on or letting go. <laughs> it depends what you need at the moment, right? Um, and patience. There's, um, you know, there's a problem of manifesting illusions of guidance and and pretending spiritual confidence, and this comes from, I think, misunderstandings. Um, and one just has to hold on, depending on if they love God enough, if they love you, right? So everything that we do is, um, you know, sometimes it's a matter of just declaring, declaring yourself a vehicle for the Varda and Hura and Magadma. Sometimes that's all that's needed, and then other times you have to find out what it is that the Master wants uh, from you. Because uh, there might be a certain a path or a certain direction, and you don't always, it's not always obvious at first. Can you give an example? Kind of. I'm. I'm a little reluctant to give a negative example, because well, I would have to positive, follow it up with positive example. Well, there's been positive uh, examples of this where we rely on inner guidance to go in a certain direction, but it's, it's uh, a little more vague when we try to give examples. Like, um, uh, I don't know if I'd be breaking the law of silence when I give uh, these types of examples. That's hard to. Uh, well, one example would be when I left my home, when I kind of uh, went in a new direction. I was going to move to Florida to live near you. <laughs> and um, I had, you know, we had the full intention of doing Vardakar, of doing the mailing and printing. And I was very excited to serve in that way. And of course, the Varden uh, uprooted us and yeah, and we went, in a <laughs> we went in a new direction and we went travel. The, the day that I arrived was also the day we left. And I didn't expect that. But I was ready for it. <laughs> I'd been ready for I've been ready for that for many years. Yeah, talk about spontaneity. <laughs> there was a lot of spontaneity. <laughs> and before before I even left I did have some doubts. I was like um trying to get the answer on the inner. I had to be very sure because I'd tried something like this before and run into some trouble. Um so I had to and there was a lot of things happening at that time which were like puzzle pieces coming into place, and I could sense what the Varden wanted me to do. It seemed obvious, you know, I had a certain job, he which I a, needed he to... He had to break out of his old routines and his uh, old uh, expectations to do what Var the Varden wanted, which, mm -hmm. was, um, which was breaking his usual pattern into something different. Spiritually. Yeah. Well, like you said about me being psychic, I, I kind of seen this coming <laughs> for, <laughs> for many years. And um, so I expected, I did expect it in a way. I was like prepared and ready to, to, to travel and to leave. But um, what was I saying? No, I, had to, I did have to get a strong knowingness, though. I had to be sure. And this is the thing is, um, is sometimes, excuse me, sometimes you have to be sure. How do you practice having knowingness? It's something that uh, some people have talked about struggling with, but it is necessary um, to know the difference between the higher knowingness of the God worlds and things from the mental plane and below, because there is a difference. And um, the lower planes will trick you, and sometimes it'll give you a false knowingness, which is like blazing. And um, one example is we were driving in a car uh, you and me were driving and we're headed to a certain uh, location we're trying to uh, go to a new country and um, we were trying to get a knowingness of which uh, place to go to and uh, the first knowingness we got was like very strong it was like kind of astral and i was like okay well that's a choice but part of me was telling me that this is feels kind of astral even though it was very strong you know and i was like i wondered why that was and and then there was another uh, exit that we learned about, um, and it was, this was very spontaneous, and we had to keep, we pulled over because we were both exhausted <laughs> and tired, and we had to get a good knowingness about it. And uh, we were sitting there, and we did this multiple times. We had to, we started driving, and then we came back, and 
because we had to be very uh, sure of what we were doing. And the, the actual knowingness we got was more subtle. It was, it was very subtle. It wasn't blazing. And we ended up going in that direction. And it ended up working out that we got where we needed to go. Um, but the point, yeah, the point is, is that the lower worlds can trick you and give an illusion of, of knowingness and guidance. Yeah. When uh, sometimes it's the cow. Sometimes you know. chilas will say, um, I got, you know, I got inner guidance, I got spiritual guidance to do this. Mm. And what they don't realize was that the cow gave them an experience in the astral plane mm. that conformed their prefer that conformed with their preferences or made it was more convenient for them on the human level. Mm -hmm. But on the spiritual level, it didn't come from the garden, it came from the cow. And, right. And it, and it, and it, sometimes during a trip that that would happen where a lower sign would happen like a physical coincidence mm -hmm. but that coincidence it was from the cow trying to mm -hmm. lead us in the wrong direction instead yeah. of when we would get a more something more subtle from the god worlds mm -hmm. and that was from the barden and the mergatma and the masters yeah and this is vital information <laughs> yeah. um, because you know just having a feeling about something isn't isn't it and you have to keep experimenting and keep practicing and you have to, and it can, you can uh, learn it quickly, just, you have to really want it, you have to need it, need to be sure. Yeah. And when you feel that you are sure, that's when uh, you can start to make, um, have a confidence in this knowingness, you know, spiritual confidence. There's something else. Um, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that, and that is, I think that's part of the path to loving oneself as soul, is relying on the inner, relying on the God worlds, relying on Fubi Quants, on the, the Magatma, on Varda, and the Hure, because those are our tools. We have the spiritual exercises, and we have these tools, and we, uh, when we learn to use them in accord with the Varda, and Hure, and Magatma, then and this creates uh, more uh, of what we want, the spiritual confidence, and more loving of oneself as soul, and then um, this is um, the solution, I think. Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, Knowingness is so important. Yeah. It's it's like the difference between success and failure. Yes, and I've I've heard it and I've also repeated it. <laughs> yeah. And some people haven't quite listened, but I guess another lifetime. Yeah. Yes. Or now. <laughs> or now. <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to uh, take a break and then do the next talk. There's a, the eighth, our eighth initiate, Leonard Penn. Tonight he couldn't make it to the seminar, so Leonard is going to actually, he's going to speak, but he sent his talk, and I'm going to read it out loud. Uh, Leonard is a beautiful soul and a magnificent uh, initiate who works with the Varden Masters. So uh, Leonard, here's what Leonard says. Quote, welcome, and also thank you for your presence. The Varden Initiate are guided by the Living Master, also the Margatma, on all states of consciousness. It is essential daily doing your spiritual exercises. This opens your awareness to the light and sound, which is the twin pillars of spirit, the voice of God. The light and sound then will work off your karma, the light sound and sound have access to your past lives and heal them from your reincarnation karma we have carried around with in our hearts these engrams and misguided self-sabotage for thousands of years this will be with the margatma and the inner to seek his counsel and release them and heal on a very deep level by allowing the love and the light and sound of god to heal on the deep level 
You are, we are a brilliant spark of God. You as soul are unlimited. It is important to know that the Hure loves all souls. We must put our attention in the right place. This way, the spiritual self-doubt can know that the Hure loves us all mistakes and flaws. He can see himself as loved by Hure, God, and the Master. Barack Bashad, Leonard, end quote, end quote, end quote, end quote. Welcome to this session, which is a talk from Heather G. about psychic... Let me start again. So welcome to this session, which is a talk from Gashai Zal about psychic versus spiritual healing, which is a really beautiful topic. Yes. Well, f first I, I should mention uh, welcome, everyone. <laughs> first I have to say it's a great, great blessing to be a in foreign car. Sometimes people take for granted the enormous, magnificent blessing of being in Vardenkar and they start to focus on what's wrong in life or what's missing or problems when, in a sense, it reminds me of what Alan G. said about how the, the chila is similar to the fish surrounded by water. The chila is surrounded by the Varden. The initiate is surrounded by the Varden and he's swimming in these profound gifts from the Hure itself, from the Murgatma, is guiding every step, even when it appears that he's running off all of this painful karma or challenges or things that he faces that are spiritual tests. He is still swimming in this light and sound of Hure, God. He is these blessings, such as he has Vardenkar books that he can study, the, the sacred works, the words of the Master, he is blessed because he can go on the inner planes and chant the Zikhar, the holy names for God, and hear the sound current and be on that returning wave home to God. And he is blessed because he has the presence of Ribazor Taras and Yabal Sakami and the Murgatma Fubi Kwans, Alan G, Gopal Das, the Varden, the Hure, and myself. He's so, so, so blessed and so loved. And he has that opportunity in this lifetime. And he will not let himself be tricked into the illusion that, that things are not, and not right in himself. He will be not tricked by the cow power into focusing with his mind on the things of this world, on what is of the cow, but instead he can lift his attention above all of the karmic concerns and transcend them. Well, this, this talk is about the psychic versus spiritual healing, and the difference between psychic and spiritual healing is <laughs> they're in completely different universes. You know, you have the physical universe, which is the vast realms of planets, galaxies, and so forth, suns, and that's on the physical level. And then you have the psychic universes, astral, causal, mental. And then you have the spiritual universes, if you see the God worlds, the pure positive God worlds, like the soul plane, a world of white light, pure light, heavenly, the lack of lock, the Anami lock, which was filled with a beautiful, profound sound current of a whirlpool and pure light. So spiritual healing is the consciousness that comes from the God worlds. Psychic healing comes from the consciousness such as the astral. They are completely different. Even though spiritual healing gives the illusion, I mean, I'm sorry, even though psychic healing gives the illusion of being spiritual healing, they are not the same thing. I recall once that Alan G., when Alan G. was very, very ill, 
uh, he the the very first week we were together as a new couple he was in the hospital and I was sleeping overnight in the hospital and it was it was like that quite a bit but over the years there were times we resorted to all kinds of unusual methods and were sometimes almost desperate to save his life at times so we would even resort to things like seeing psychics we would see absolutely anybody sometimes which wasn't always good but it illustrated things later on so maybe it wasn't an accident uh, <laughs> Well, you know, such as, I mean, our home, sometimes we refer to it as the museum of things to save Alan's life. <laughs> well, anyway, out-of-body travel, when, when we did healing exercises regarding out-of-body travel, uh, he, there would be the most progress, such as Yabo Sakabi gave Alan G a very beautiful healing exercise that he included in, in the book. Uh, Dialogues with Yabo Sakabi, where he shares an exercise of spiritual healing with Yabo. Well, at one point, at one point, um, Alan G and I, we, when we, we went to do something, and I don't recommend anyone does this, <laughs> because we were just desperate, and, but we went to see, um, we went to see certain psychics. There was one psychic healer we saw and and it was sort of interesting but um alan g the psychic wanted to show alan g on the inner what she had found what was her big breakthrough and she she basically brought him into the mental plane and he saw this blazing white light of the mental plane and then he saw what looked like jesus and and that Jesus, you know, was there with him and so forth. And he said, he said to me, had I been, had I not been a Vardenist and not practiced out of body travel, I would have thought that that was the real Jesus. But he said that because he could see from pure soul and from the God worlds, he could see that that this this entity that was a manifestation of these beings like this the this psychic healer who created it who manifested it in this mental plane it almost looks slightly cartoonish and and when we when we look look upon spiritual healing from a higher level of consciousness we realize that there is a very strong illusion in the lower worlds of something being very very high when it is actually still in the lower worlds and this is why, like Sean mentioned before, that knowingness is so vital, like air. Knowingness is placing your attention in the God worlds, the pure positive God worlds, and really appreciating it, and having a sense of awareness that you, the knowingness will just come because you are there, a part of you, a soul is just there. And and this is why practicing the spiritual exercises, the Vardenkar spiritual exercises, consistently in every single day, 30 minutes at least, is vital to one's spiritual life. Well, anyway, we went and saw a second, a second psychic at that time. And I do, again, I don't recommend seeing psychics, um, but this was kind of funny. Um, and at that time, we were undergoing a lot of psychic attacks, and he was looking for healing. But the psychic attacks were very extreme. Um, some of these people were dark magicians from the Middle Ages, from the from another group, and um, <laughs> and we were just sort of desperate at that time. But it was kind of hilarious too, because one of the things that the psychic would say to us, we would tell her that that we dwelled in the God worlds, and then she would say, "Oh." You, like we would tell about the the tenth plane and and God realization. She would say, "Oh, I go there all the time. I you know I visit with God all the time," <laughs> and and she started describing things and it I mean it appeared to be high, but it really it was it was the astral plane that she was describing, and and she would say uh, and <laughs> she would say look up at us, and she would say hey. She would sound very frustrated, and she would say, "Hey, get back in your bodies! You're way, way up there. Get back in your bodies!" 
And we got a kick out of that. And then, it, and then it was very funny. She said she wanted to, well, anyway, she wanted to play for us this deeply spiritual music, like very high vibration, deeply spiritual music. And she'd press play. And it, it really sounded like, it sounded kind of eerie, like a haunted house. <laughs> but one, one of the things that she didn't realize was that, was that even though in her mind it appeared as if she was communicating with God and she was in the God worlds that the astral plane will give this illusion of being the highest heaven or going to a psychic for healing will appear as though it'll give the illusion that the answers are given. But what are those answers coming from? Very often the cow. So it's, it's almost like the difference between someone recommending someone listen to music that sounds like haunted house music with ghosts and saying that that is very healing spiritual music, and then hearing the in, inner sound current from the Anami lock. They're completely different universes. And that's why sometimes, you know, we have chilas that were gifted psychics in their past lives. They had certain abilities as healers or psychic or uh, witches or other types of things, occult. And they develop these abilities where they can see things on, on the other side. They can, see, they can see things that are invisible to other people. But when they rely too heavily on their past, they may not realize that they're actually relying on something that is not the highest level, even though it gives the illusion of appearing that. Recently, I, I gave um, a chila an initiation, a chila who is a very powerful psychic in past lives and and she has a, a deep inner perception a deep awareness but because of the strength of these past lives it's difficult to let go of certain things like relying upon certain entities that even though those beings and entities may appear to have uh, the answers or guidance or a certain, or someone relying on on someone is psychic may appear to have a certain guidance, especially when it's impressive because it's more uh, has more senses involved. Like you can actually like see something vividly on the inner, and you can feel it and hear it, and and you experience like a powerful energy, and not realize that that is psychic in nature. That's astral because it has more matter in it. It gives the illusion of being more spiritual and more real. But as a Vardenist, as a true Varden initiate, we learn to instead let go of the past, even though that's difficult because it's when you're really good at something, when you're really talented at something, and you're confident at it, it gives you confidence. And then when you try something new, you feel like a bumbling fool because you're making mistakes, you're not, it's not as easy to do, you're having trouble, you're struggling. So for some who develop themselves a lot in the psychic area, it can be really hard to let that go because then you feel like, you feel like, you know, incompetent, like an idiot, like a fool. But that's what we sometimes go through. We have to start all over again. It's like Alan G and I. We were in the e-group for many years. And then when we started, when we found the master, we literally, up, oh, you know, start over again. It's baby time. It's time to be, a, it's time to crawl <laughs> instead of walk. And, and that takes humility. There are some chilos, they've only been in three, five years, but they, they have this overconfidence that they are already the, like a master and they don't have to listen to Fubi Kwans, they don't have to listen to me. They just sort of brush us aside. Like they don't need they don't need the masters, they don't need the ancient masters, they don't need us, they're already there. And and this this is what has caused a lot of people to fall off the path because of egoism. And uh, egoism of feeling that they have all the answers and that they sh can tell the master what to do. They have all the answers, and in their mind and in their lower bodies, they have direction and sort of like they don't need to rely on Fubi Kwans, Asamurgatma, or Ribazor Taurus, Yabo Sakabi. 
the Bard and the Hure, Alan G, or myself, that this overconfidence or egoism causes them to rely too heavily on the lower psychic levels and the mind and social influences. And so they end up relying more on psychics or on social friendships or on their mind or the, or the news or whatever and trust that more than they trust the Murgatma, Flippy Kwans, or then they trust myself, an outer master, outer bard master, or then they trust Rivas Artaris and his wisdom, or Yabo Sakabi. And, and what this is, is it's, it's sort of like, it's sort of like one must be humble before God. One must be sort of as as a little child, meaning open-minded, like Alan G would say, opening one's heart and and be willing to be humble before God and realize that the Hure knows far more than we know in the little body. That if, if we are only, we have only been in Vardakar for, the person has only been in Vardakar for three to five years, and and to make assumptions that they know more than the master that they don't need, the master or that they that they already have all the answers and they talk back to the master and the master corrects them and and they become defensive and don't listen and close their ears they become unteachable because egoism egoism is sort of like the opposite of being humble of having a humble spirit and and giving respect to certain beings that have a vast experience, like Fubi Kwans. He is a, a, being, a being a very great Varden Master of light and radiance and dwells in, deep in the God worlds. Or Yabo Sakabi, his consciousness is deep in the ocean of love and mercy, deep in the ocean of the Hure, and it's light and sound. And Rebus Artaris, who is a powerful Varden master who is deeply centered in the Hure and in serving it powerfully on many levels with many beings simultaneously. If we don't, if we don't have the, the knowingness to be aware, to really truly be aware that it is a great blessing and joy to be in their presence and seek their counsel and receive their teachings. And instead we are arrogant and we argue with the art, with uh, a Varden master on the inner or argue with a Varden master on the outer or try to bypass a master or seem as if the Varden master doesn't exist because of a belief, a great confidence in the little self that we, that that person knows more than the master then that person has trouble moving forward spiritually. They kind of trip themselves up. They, their overconfidence or egoism causes them to sink down into the psychic level instead of allowing the Varden and the, ma and the Master to lift them up into the God world. And it's not just doing the spiritual exercises but it, every day, but it's doing the spiritual exercises with divine love and an open heart and a willingness to not, how can I say, a willingness to not get stuck in patterns that we've always been in in the past. So <laughs> aside from that, those two psychics that Alan G and I visited, <laughs> um, it was funny, it was unusual because we were talking to her about the God worlds and visiting the God worlds and she would say, oh, I've been to the God worlds. I met God there yesterday and, and then I go there every day. And then she started describing it and it sounded exactly like the astral plane. So, I mean, if, if someone has a lot of power in the astral level or they they have a powerful presence, like you, you get some chilas, they have a powerful presence around them that's magnetic, it, it's magical, 
they're relying on some people are relying too heavily on the astral and also i i also want to say that there are some chilas that are that need to stop doing magic because the mold making mold making is related to doing the hero's will and there are some chilas that are trying to force certain things with magic to manifest what they want in life not as the hero's will but according to their ego and magic is a violation of spiritual law just like with psychic healing sometimes magic is done where the person tries to do their own will the little self and tries to force the psychic force to manifest what they want they want to to have certain thing happen in their life and they try to force it with magic and that's psychic and not spiritual and what that does is that pulls the, the light and sound down to a lower level of consciousness down to the astral level and it stunts that person's spiritual growth and they get stuck spiritually instead of moving ahead they get stuck in the reincarnation loop instead of moving forward spiritually the lower worlds give this illusion of being very high of being the god worlds when really they're planes of slavery and reincarnation of the masses and and really the entity in the astral plane that appears to be god is not not the hero not god uh, sometimes that's a big a big issue with with chilas is um i or alan g would discuss with them um a certain decision that they were making spiritually whatever it was and some some chilas would really rely on their knowingness and getting answers on the inner from the margatma the living born master and then there were other chilas that would say oh i got i got spiritual guidance to do this but what they didn't realize was they were getting spiritual guidance from a lower level the astral level or the causal level or certain entity or or being that was merely confirming or sending messages to confirm what they really wanted with their human self they wanted something confirmed so bad to be a certain way and they got that confirmation but it was from the negative power and not from the hero and the magatma <laughs> but um the thing that actually was the most healing spiritually on all levels uh when Alan G went through this process was that when we went on the inner planes and he got certain healing exercises from Yabo Sakabi that helped and also when I went on the inner planes and sought help and guidance and that manifested on different levels one of the on the physical level that manifested as finding a very talented indian doctor um one who had uh miraculous healings for his patients and several times we recru- we applied his very grueling program we I'd have to do this with him and uh others have to do this with him from early morning to late at night doing special massages and smoothies ayurvedic massages and smoothies and buying r- exotic rare vegetables at the indian store <laughs> and and different ar- ayurvedic powders and potions and fluids and it was and and cooking exotic kinds of things but anyway it was very complicated it was very complicated and very difficult but the guidance came on every level the physical the astral and so forth and and spiritual healing is deep healing it's healing that goes back perhaps even thousands of years um of worth of karma whereas psychic healing or just physical healing will sometimes heal something and then it might come back because the person has only healed one layer of the onion they don't get to the root cause of why a person is sick but <laughs> and that and a lot of that is about knowing this coming from a place of knowing this placing our attention in the god worlds relying on the god worlds 
and relying on the Mergatma and relying on the Hure and relying on one's true self, soul, a spark of God unlimited. Because when you truly trust yourself as soul, your pure divine essence as a God being, then you have a knowing that there is the answer and you will find it. Because many, many times throughout my life I've encountered, oh my goodness, I've encountered situations where it was like almost like life and death with health. And with Alan G or myself, and it was almost like the Jeopardy song, do na, you have 10 seconds to solve this before you don't make it. Do na, 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 da, 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 da. And the answer is, <laughs> and, and you have to sometimes just go on the inner and know that you'll, you'll find direction. I mean, there were times when Alan G was in the hospital and there were beings that were, there were magicians that were psychically attacking, trying to make it that a procedure wouldn't work. And so I'd have to trust the Varden and trust myself as soul that I would know exactly what to do, that I would be guided not to do something psychic to defend myself or him, but to do what the Varden guided me to do, which at that time was I, I began to chant the Zikar and I began to focus deeply on certain things and it protected. And the Varden came in and, pro and protected him and the procedure went well, it went positive because of that. But it's also, it's a matter of trusting yourself as soul. That as a spark of God, you believe and you know that, that, that the guidance will come to you, that you will know what to do to heal spiritually. Not leaning on, on the past of psychic things, what, we're, what some are used to, but relying more heavily on the Mergatma. The, the, same, um, the same individual who was powerful psychically was mentioning that, that they couldn't, they, that they were in anticipation for, to have, a, to have a, a, a master, an outer master. And so I corrected her and said, there already is an outer master. <laughs> There is Phobi Kwan's, the Mergama, the living Varden Master, and there's myself, an outer Varden Master. If we don't appreciate what we have, if we take for granted the amazing divine beings that are before us, other Chilas, the ancient Varden Masters, the living Varden Master, it's, it's like that fish in, in water surrounded by the Varden. Those that don't appreciate it, throw it away in the trash. Those who have gratitude and divine love and realize that they are chosen by the Hure to return to it and realize how enormously blessed they are. When you have gratitude, it's like giving yourself a gift. It's like giving yourself the gift that, that you can make the very most of the spiritual path without taking for granted. There were, back in the old days, there were some, there were many chilas who they didn't have an easy access to the outer master. They would study just on the inner and get like directions on the inner. They didn't have books. They didn't have pictures that we have today. They didn't have outer seminars, or maybe they had to walk hundreds of miles just to be to see the master once, or maybe they didn't see the master at all their entire lifetime. Like my past life with Zadok, I only saw him for six years. What was it? I'm sorry, seven years, and then he went away. The rest of my life, I could only connect with him on the inner planes. So the Chilas are very, very lu lucky and blessed that they have all these outer and inner things. But do they appreciate them? Or, or will they rely on the past and rely on outer groups 
and outer psychic beings and outer forces instead of appreciating what they already have. What's that saying? Um, Alan G. once said that about split consciousness is like riding two horses. And as these hor horses, one psychic and one spiritual, start to separate, it causes pain. Because a rider can't easily ride two horses that are going in two different directions. And what ends up happening is if the individual does not make a choice, then the choice is made for him by the negative power. Because the psychic and the spiritual just don't mix. And, and so eventually at some point, the chula has to decide what he wants to commit to. Does he want to commit to psychic things or the things of this world? Or does he want to commit to Vardhankar, to the Hure, God, and, and finish the journey. Spiritual exercises are, are vital, and, and deepening one's knowingness, and one's knowingness is vital, because uh, the psychic just gives this illusion of being spiritual when it's not. But I want to, I want to open this up um, to open this up and, and we can we can talk about this together as well oh sure <laughs> so is there anything anything else that you feel relevant to bring up mm -hmm. the psychic and spiritual yeah I like what you said um, well it's been said many times that the psychic and spiritual don't mix it's like oil and water yeah and when you try to mix them together, it's like mixing different paths together. Yeah. There's There was a time where I I tried things like that. <laughs> and it, it doesn't work. Um, because it's like there was someone once who said, um, people try to separate the teaching teachings from the teacher. And that's a mistake because your whole, like, the t when you, like you said, when you pick a teacher, you pick a destination. Yeah. And so if you don't know where your influences are coming from, then it creates a, an opportunity for the cow to steer your soul how it wants because it's got the whole lower world in its, in its palm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, being aware of your influences is supremely important, I think. It's very subtle. Mm -hmm. It's very subtle, too. Because uh, it can appear as if one is getting spiritual guidance when they're getting guidance from their mind or guidance from the lower world or guidance from other people socially and rise above the lower worlds and not identify with the little self. Because some chilas seem to think that the little self of the master has to be perfect. And that's why some couldn't gravitate to the high path, to Alan G., because they saw his outer bodies and perhaps some of his behavior, his, his overweight, his imperfect health, his boisterous sort of uh, attitude. And they, they see these outer things or, or even mistakes and they make assumptions that he can't possibly be the living Varden master because they people are enamored by the lower bodies so that when they see someone from a planet who has maybe 5,000 years of emotional development so that they have a pure serenity of the emotional body or like a uh, almost wizard-like ability with manifesting things on the a astral level they have sort of like an aura of power or they have like a mental acuity that is very sharp from, from lots and lots of reading and so forth and they assume that that's mastership even though the person is on an astral level but chilas sometimes are too easily swayed by the opinions of other chilas when they are tainted by cow-like interjections into their mind body and it spreads like a disease among some because they don't have the ability to go on the inner, some people do not have the ability to go on the inner and rely on the Murgatma and Fubiquans, on the Hure, God, and the Varden, this voice of God. 
and one of the hardships and pains and difficulties that someone goes through when they are an outer master like Alan G is that certain beings who are who as you can say not opening themselves not aware they lean on the social and they lean on the psychic to get their answers and at times it is almost like a warfare where you feel like you're being attacked on all sides and you have to completely rely on the Varden and on the Hure. We had to, f to flee not only my home and I lost my office and my husband, but I had to flee the country due to religious persecution. And it was necessary because of the severity of things. But it was destined to be this way with the Varden, that the Varden was pushing things in a new direction. But if Chila simply had the knowingness and the beingness and the awareness to get their answers not from the cow when it channels through Chila's, but get their answers from the Varden and the Hure and the Margatma Fubiquans, they would see the vision of what is destined to happen for Vardenkar instead of standing in the way of that occurring. They would be a channel of the Murgatma and help during an emergency and say, we like just the, the brothers of the leaf, all for one and one for all. When I am there with Alan G, I have his back. When he is in the hospital and he cannot defend himself and there are beings who are powerful wizards in their past lives are trying to make his operation fail. I am a channel of the Varden to protect him in that emergency. If Chilas would realize that they are destined for self-realization and God-realization, they would be pure channels of the Varden. Those who are complainers, fault-finders, they become ch channels for the cow power, and they get in their way and block the Varden coming through and allowing this great future for Varden Tar to happen. There are some Chilas who go to me often and I could help them spiritually and they, the Varden would flow through with light and sound and they would have profound breakthroughs being sort of stuck in the astral to suddenly dwelling more in the soul plane and having more light and sound and having profound experiences of the Vard, of filling themselves with doubt, of filling themselves with worry, getting answers from their mind, and not trusting the Varden. Alan G. once said to me when I was once filled with some fear, and because I was filled with fear I was making mistakes, and he said to me and said, looked at me in the eyes and said, Heather G., trust in the Varden. And that's what I say to you. When you have worry or fear or doubt, for a moment step back from it and trust in the Varden, trust in the Hure, that everything is for a reason, even when it seems as though things are difficult, or you have so many problems that it's like you're drowning in this karmic stuff or these attacks or whatever it is. Maybe it, you lost your job or maybe you're having a health challenge or maybe people are not seeing your true divine self, the God self in you, this capacity you have as a divine spiritual being and they only see the little self and the worst. Whatever it is, in that moment trust in the Varden and trust in the Hure that it is bringing you exactly where you need to be. It's just a matter of more deeply, more deeply trusting your knowingness and putting your attention in the God worlds. It's that saying that we always say again and again, the true sincere initiate always dwells in the pure positive worlds of God. So worry and fear and doubt, it's, it's, it's a form of sabotage, but it's also a test from the cow 
and the Hura to see if you're worthy of moving to higher levels. Mm. Beautifully put about um, that it's a test and it, uh, it tests you, obviously. And I've uh, we've been in situations in the last year and recently that tested me a lot. <laughs> I, I I was filled with a lot of fear and doubt, and I was had a lot of dread to do certain things that we had to do. And um, getting through it was um, it was very difficult. But then eventually, um, it just by trusting in the Bard and and following the guidance every step of the way that it worked out and um, everything was fine. And so it is a test. I mean, that's the, I think that's the best way of looking at, at it. Fear, doubt, worry, because... Um, there were times, yeah. there were times we were in a foreign country mm -hmm. and all our, all our financial accounts were attacked. Mm -hmm. His credit cards were shut down, my ca cards were shut down, uh, somebody intercepted a uh, wire transfer, uh, our bank accounts were intercepted, and we were literally in another country with no money. And so we had to go on an inner level, and instead of focusing on worry, instead of fe focusing on the fear, which a lot of people would be very fearful if they had no money for food or shelter, and didn't know and what to do a, next. And you're in a foreign country. And you're in a foreign country. And so when you're confronted with something that's scary like that, you have to trust in the Varden. And you have to trust in the Murgatma and the Hure. And know that you are in its arms. And doors will be open and things are away for a reason. And it wasn't just uh, finance, it was, it was many, many things. Um, we'll talk about them later. But when you're, when you're confronted by something that brings great fear or great worry, one of the mistakes that many chilas have is they will allow it to dominate their thought body as a form of mind control from the negative power, where it will begin to infiltrate all their thoughts and fill them and then the cow starts to come in and take over and they start to it puts a wedge between them and the Barden Master or it puts a wedge between them and the path it's then that, that we are being spiritually tested to see if we can go on the inner and find the answers Instead of feeling worry, suddenly we feel guided and protected. And every step, you know, it reminds me of that, oh God, there was once a, an old uh, a poem or something where they were talking about that the whole time one is being carried by God, like every step of the way, if we just realize it. I believe it was Paul G. that once said that the master, the living board master, the Murgatma, will intentionally, with intention, mm -hmm. plant a seed of doubt in someone's mind or consciousness as a spiritual test to see what they will do with it. Do, do they care more about the things of this world? Or do they care more about returning to Hure, God. Because, for instance, this situation where, this situation where, uh, <laughs> where Varnkar was under attack, where I was under attack, and we had to, to basically protect ourselves or flee. Religious persecution. Right. I, I lost my, my office, and many, <laughs> many things with technology were broken and so forth but and because of that that gap and certain things certain people seeing certain things going wrong made assumptions that were incorrect they may be seeing that the phone lines were sometimes cut assumed that I didn't care 
or assumed that that the the Varden didn't care about them or something like this, but that's not true. And it's like it's like sort of like truth mixed with illusion, which is like you said, the rat poison. And so when somebody is poisoned on the path, they they have difficulty seeing from the god worlds because they're focused more on the lower bodies. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful and it's true what you, you said about um, about putting attention in the god worlds. And Chilas and we are, um, those who are in Varnakar are, as you've said many times, are very blessed and I still have to realize that more, but I know I know that we are very blessed. And no matter what's happening uh, on the outer, that golden wisdom uh, is always there. And the golden wisdom temples are there, the ancient Varden Masters are there, the Hure is there, the living Varden Master is always there. And all we have to do is put our attention there. You know, so whatever's happening on the outer and the path, it's it's it hasn't gone anywhere <laughs> and also there are transition periods mm, yeah you know um transition periods where certain things have to happen and flourish it's like planting seeds like alan G would say if you plant seeds in the ground and you wa water those seeds with worry and doubt and low expectations of on the outer then what will you get? You'll get a crop of dead growth. But if instead you focus on the outer as flourishing, as the path expanded, as Vardenkar reaching the souls that it needs to reach, and being effective, and you're flourishing in your spiritual growth on the inner and the path of, and the high path on the outer, then what will happen? The path will flourish. If I give Chilas uh, a suggestion or a directive, like seeing Bardenkar flourish and expand and be successful, and they do that, then it helps the path grow. The Chilas that fill themselves with worry and doubt and have a vision of Bardenkar not being successful, what are they doing? They are sabotaging the master, they're sabotaging me, they're sabotaging the high path. And they're sabotaging themselves, their cal channels when they do that. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of successes on the outer, and we'll have more successes if people have eyes to see and ears to hear. Yeah. So people need to have trust in the Vard and Huri and Magapma and also Fubi and also in you. Because, um, you know, you take away one of those things and the path, it won't work. Yeah. You know, we do need an outer interim master to do the important work on the outer. And I've seen, um, <laughs> if there's any thought that, you know, someone could replace Heather G at this moment, it's not possible. And I've seen the way she works and the way you, um, sometimes it's not human the way you can do things on the spot. and and always have the drive to do more, even if things are uh, really difficult. <laughs> well, one of the things that, that people, some chilas didn't realize, is that Vardakar is still alive. There were times that we were under such serious attack that it could have perished a number of times. But not only have we survived, we have persevered and overcome a lot of obstacles that would have otherwise destroyed it. We had a lot of successes in overcoming obstacles. And, um, and now the Chilas need to make molds in accord with the Hure's will, not the ego, but the Hure's will, that the path and see a vision of the path that the Hure gives, that Vardenkar is getting bigger, and that we had to go through trials and tribulations and, and tests to pass in order to, 
to do so. And Sheila's that have expectations that come from the will of the Hure are having successes and soaring spiritually and reaching higher initiation levels because they have the proper spiritual attitude of gratitude. And when we see the, when we see the best in each other spiritually we bring it out. Hmm. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Um, I'm very uh, fortunate to spend a lot of time with you, and it, it is a tremendous blessing. And I know that without it, it would be difficult, <laughs> um, if not impossible, to do this particular journey that we've done. And I, I don't think I'd... There's been many times where I... It was hard, hard to continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, sometimes, sometimes, uh, sometimes it felt like walking over it in, on a tightrope, over a, a thousand foot ravine, over a drop of a thousand <laughs> feet, and mm -hmm. having to balance. Yeah, yeah, and um, sometimes you doubt uh, you doubt someone because they they seem like they can't do it, but <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Great souls will always surprise you. Yes. And also, when an individual doubts themselves, there are sometimes chilas, sometimes chilas will doubt themselves as soul. And that's, one of, that's a difficult and painful test to go through. And sometimes it, it's, it's a matter of facing it and asking for help. Sometimes when we were in the in the biggest emergencies, we had to ask for guidance and help. And if a person doesn't have humility to ask for help and listen, then going through the difficult spiritual test is very hard. It's very hard. And also, you know, if somebody has doubts or concerns and things like this, they can they can seek to find guidance on the inner in how to deal with their doubts instead of relying on social sources or instead of contacting psychics or second outer outer people you know sources lower sources right. they need to go to the source of all sources to the varden to the hure and to the Margatma. Because someone who doesn't try to face their fear and doubt, it's almost like making a choice. He who does not make a choice, it will be made for him by the negative power. Mm. And, and so a chila that doesn't choose between the path of Bard and Kar and his doubts, then it will be chosen for him by the negative power. His doubts will will overrun his life, his fear, his worry, and it will overtake him. It's like a form of mind control. This is what the negative power does. It uses fear, worry, and doubt as a form of mind control to take over the mind of the chila, and then he will manifest what he worries about in his life. There was one individual that was that was doubting doubting me personally, and and what happened was when when I would communicate with them, I would stumble about. I I almost couldn't think straight. It was like a form of black magic, being in this person's space. So in a sense, they were manifesting what they expected, and but also. Projecting that sort of thing is like a form of black magic, so it caused that it caused a spiritual degeneration in them, an inner collapse spiritually. It's very important that when we have doubt or worry or fear, that 
that instead of instead of guessing what seems mentally correct or what seems morally correct socially and so forth that a person a chila lives a path not as a religion mm. but as an expression of out of body travel this is the point of the path out of body to the travel the whole point of it is to make use of it in your life so that when you come upon anything a worry, a problem, a doubt, a dilemma in your life where, where you're faced with a health challenge or you're faced with a physical challenge or loss of job you have these spiritual tools of out of body travel to deal with these things this is the point it's like it's like a, a state of consciousness, a way of life, not just something you do once a day to sort of spiritualize yourself a little bit. It is a way of life. It's a state of consciousness. And so anything that you're confronted with in your life, any challenge, any difficulty, you can use these tools to find guidance. And one of those one of those tools is like, for example, Milarepa did. His master left and he was in a cave. So perhaps on, on the outer there was a period where I was not as available temporarily when, when I was having this emergency going on. But what happened to Milarepa when he had this period? He went on the inner. The master was with him on the inner in the cave, and he practiced the presence, and he received inner instructions what to do. Mm -hmm. And he practiced these exercises, these inner instructions from the master, and he unfolded. So. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and if people, you know, people can people have so much opportunity they can do initiate supports and write down the things that are upsetting them or bothering them and put it in the Varden stream that way yes there's other ways and um, or they could even write you a letter because some people think they don't want to bother you or something maybe but but you are maybe for a while you weren't like you were saying but you are available Yes. Actually, it's very important for, for Chiyolis to write initiates reports and, as for now, emailing them to membership at foreigncar.com uh, for Chiyolis to do their initiate reports. But initiate reports are very, very important because it is a way of surrendering to the Mergatma, Fubiquan, surrendering to the Varden, the Hure, myself, and the ancient Varden masters, surrendering your concerns and your burdens, your worries asking for help and and you're literally giving the Varden and Masters permission to help you, to guide you, to assist you when you do the initiates report. Mm -hmm. So they're especially useful to do every month, but they're especially useful to do when you're facing any kind of challenge. Mm -hmm. And also asking for help. <laughs> yeah, they are helpful and I've noticed that if I ever forgot uh, to do them, I run into some trouble sometimes and then I'm like, oh, I forgot to do my initiative report. Yeah. And it sets things on course again and and um, in my experience. It does, it does. And also, like I was saying with Milarippa, having this inner dialogue with these different Varden masters and listening. And listening listening also to the still for small voice of the Varden. Mm. It's like Alan G said to me and I'll say it again, that when I was in a state of, of fear and worry, he said to me, he said to me, trust in the Varden, trust in the Hure. And he's right, whenever I'm faced with a situation that could be fearful, I can remember that. That in that moment I can just pause, stop, mm -hmm. and trust the Hure it's like that past life, that past life thing that that occurred to me, the the spot, the spinal injury, where I didn't trust the universe and the hure. And my major lesson in that injury was that 
I could just trust in the Hue Ray. Even if a person loses their physical body, they didn't trust in the Hue Ray because the Hue Ray is always with us as soul. And that, and that every moment, any moment, we can have that inner guidance if we simply shift our consciousness and refocus just for a moment. Yeah, that's beautiful and true. Um, when we remember that in, in any moment that we need it, it's, it's so, um, so helpful. You know, just remember trust in the Varden because something we learn over and over again is um, those painful periods are there for some purpose and when we get through it then that things are better than they were before often. Yeah. Sometimes we go through painful things because it gives us compassion so that we can serve later on someone who's going through the same thing that we went through. So for example, if there's a chila who's gone through great illness and suffering with that illness, that maybe they went through that or volunteered to go through that because later on they will be able to share the deep insight they got from from how they recovered with someone who needs who needs comforting or help or help transitioning, translating, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, some things we go through for compassion, to develop compassion, more compassion for other souls. And, and other things, because we need, because we might go through a difficulty because Phobi Kwan's, or the ancient masters, the Bard and the Hure, and myself, want them to experience how amazing and powerful they are as a spiritual being. Because if when they start to use their tools and use their soul projection abilities to handle these situations, then at, at that point they start to realize who they are. That they're not their, their outer body or their career or, or the physical self with all its flaws, that they have this this Varden, they are this Varden. They are this great spark of God. And it pushes them to further to use that to use that spark of God to 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 be more of that Varden because they're pushed out of their comfort zone and a normal range of doing things. It's just like this seminar. Mm -hmm. Uh, not everybody could make the seminar, probably for practical reasons, but to illustrate this, sometimes a Varden will ask us to go out on a limb and do something we usually wouldn't do. And if we don't try, then we might not find out exactly what it is the Varden and the Master wanted to give us. It's just like that seminar with Allergy in 2019. You know, it was like an opportunity for some people mm -hmm. to meet the master. Yeah. But not not everybody realized the significance of of the hidden spiritual meaning behind it, and it's the same with this seminar now. There was something very significant. There is something very significant about this seminar. As a turning mm -hmm. point, but not not everybody realized the significance. We had to choose between. I think they'll have more opportunities to realize it. <laughs> yeah. But seminars are amazing, um, even if there's only three people, even two people. <laughs> <laughs> or a few people, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, even if there's only three people, you still walk away with the feeling like there was a spiritual blessing and gift, like something that you wouldn't get unless you were there. Yeah. And there, each one is special. If it, If there is a seminar, then... Uh, you bet that the Hugh Ray and the Living Garden Master and Magatma are behind it yeah. all the way. Because like, we, with our human minds, were like, are we really meant to do this? You know, Or I was thinking that. <laughs> yeah. and, um, but you know, when you go within, it's like, yes, um, this, is, this is not from us. This is from the Varden. And actually, um, there is a great significance to why this seminar is taking place. And things are not as they appear. Mm -hmm. 
But if we look on a di deeper level, we see that there's a deeper reason for this occurring, and 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 I want to express gratitude to to those who helped support it in whatever way. Mm. Yes, thank you, and thank thank you for being vehicles of the hearing and Varda. Yes, yes, thank you for being, thank you for being beautiful channels of God, the hearing, and. Um, May the blessings be. May the blessings be. Well, maybe this one is better. So, uh, oops. Oh, you started. Yes. Our eighth initiate in Vardhankar, Leonard Penn, as a channel of the of the Varden Margotma masters, he has shared another brief talk that also is very beautiful, and I uh, will read it right now. Quote. We are all gods among other gods. When I say we are all gods, this is not meant for our little self, which is temporal and finite. The little self includes all bodies, physical body, astral or emotional, causal or memory, mental or mind, etheric or subconscious. The lower worlds are an illusion, temporal and finite. It is spirit that animates all life and makes real. Soul is our true self. It is the divine spark created by the creator. Soul is identical in substance with the spirit, which is a body of pure light and sound. Soul contains all love, wisdom, power, freedom, and beyond. Soul knows through direct perception and it exists in a state of seeing, knowing, and being. It has 360 degree view. It is unlimited or undefined. The qualities listed are only a part of soul, but never the whole. If one wishes to reach into the area of self and God realization, you must have a desire for truth greater than itself. Truth is the way back to God via the audible life stream. Through the ages man has sought truth. Truth cannot be found in knowledge. The mind cannot grasp truth. It is beyond the mental realm. The higher self which is soul, your true self. Desire is always the determining, the d determining in one's experience factor. Man has become so involved in trifles of existence that he is shut off from God. Man has become so involved in the trifles of existence that he is shut off from God. Therefore, soul is forgotten. Baraka Bashad Leonard. End quote. That's very beautiful. That's a beautiful article. Yes. Beautiful and true. <laughs> mm, yeah. Wait, didn't want to stop it looking. Oh. The huh? next part. Stoking the holy fire and healing the heart. It's recording. So welcome to another session of Peru Worldwide Seminar 2023. The evening session. <laughs> yes, uh, one of the last sessions, maybe one more after this. Uh, this is a round table about... <laughs> round table with two people. Stoking the fire, stoking the holy fire and healing the heart. Yes. Wow, that's... Uh, Stoking the holy fire and healing the heart. Well, those could be 
the same thing. Could be two different things depending on how you look at it. Stoking the holy fire. Um, there's a lot you can do to stoke the holy fire. There's a reading of Vardenkar books, books from Alan G., Paul G., or Gosh Aizal, Heather G., or even other Varden masters throughout history. I've recently heard a little bit I never heard before about Apollonius of Tiana. I knew a little bit about him from something that was shared, I think. Uh, the first time I ever heard about it was from a Vardenkar documentary on YouTube about how he was, uh, he had disappeared and reappeared somewhere during a court session where they were trying to persecute him. And also he was uh, accused of being like a magician because he was very, um, he had some powers, I guess, uh, from the Farden. And um, that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, reading, uh, hearing about these things always inspires me. Hearing about ancient Varden masters like Mila Ripa, Apollonius, or even Phaedius who built the Parthenon. I mean, there's so many different things. And, oh, Plato and Pythagoras. There's just so much there that's, um, that can stoke the fire. Uh, it's basically whatever area of interest you have. There's probably a Varden master who could stoke the fire there uh, and bring some inspiration. Um, we recently met somebody who is on a different spiritual path with some similarities. And uh, they also found they said that Apollonius of Tiana was like their favorite person, one of their favorite people. And even Milarepa was one of their favorite people. I thought that was interesting. And even even though they're on a slightly, well, not slightly, it's a different path, but there are connections that are rooted in ancient history, uh, the time of Jesus, which is interesting. I don't know if uh, I could go into, I don't know if I should go into the path, but um, just the fact that these beings, these Vardin masters, can inspire people who are on different paths that's because there's something there that people can't deny that was very real and miraculous and um, it's not from the Christian realm it's um, it's something beyond that it's something that inspires people to reach higher states of consciousness and you can make a distinction between uh, the beings who are admired in religious groups and beings who are admired for spiritual reasons because the ones who are admired for spiritual reasons, they inspire soul. They're inspiring something in soul, yeah. which is to reach a higher state and to return home. Even if they're not on the right path, maybe in the future they'll be ready. But I mean, in the high path, sorry. They're on the right path <laughs> in this lifetime. But I mean, in the future, it's like they're moving towards it because these are Varden masters. These are ancient Varden masters. and. Um, they represent the high path, and even though it's uh, it's sort of given in different forms, like um, in Milarepa's time, it was given in the form of a Buddhist lineage, and that lineage sort of continued on, but it lacked uh, it lacked the proper master to make it uh, the same. It wasn't the same after Milarepa, but that path, the outer path, still kind of exists, but it's not Vardenkar. <laughs> Uh, Varden, uh, he was a Varden master, and it's like, it's a gem that's been hidden throughout history, disguised as other paths, because certain beings have reached these high states of consciousness, God realization, and Varden mastership. Yeah. So, it, uh, <laughs> one of the one of the things related to the holy fire is, in order for that living Varden master to reach. God realization and Varden mastership, they had to have within themselves cultivate an enormous holy fire mm -hmm. because that is the way that they're able to pass the spiritual tests. Because they had to choose between the things of this world or Hure. They had to choose between the things of this world and choose a projection to these pure positive God worlds. And when you look at Plato, Plato. <laughs> As a living Varden master, he was on fire for the Hure, and he was this pure channel of God, Hure. He, he, like his teacher Socrates, 
was able to was able to get chilas out of their mind out of their mind and to try to think logically out of, of things and instead he used a Socratic method to get them to instead flow with soul and and follow the guidance from the Varden so he would surprise them with unexpected questions that would shock them, sort of like shake them out of their mental, normal mental expectations to get them to realize that they didn't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. That the Varden did if they could just let go and let God. And um, Pythagoras also had that keen holy fire, that, that light and spark because he had such intensity and he intensely intensely would project his soul he had that holy fire where he loved the hure and he projected a soul deep into the god worlds to dwell with it like by the ocean he would stand by the ocean and and deeply center himself in the pure positive god worlds in the ocean of love and mercy and he saw he saw a lot of the things that, that came to him are beyond the technology and so forth they had in that day because as soul he could project and see things and see things related to number and related to things that they understand in astronomy and so forth because he had this ability at soul projection. He didn't need the internet. He could look he is a powerful spark of God with that creative spark can do those things. And Milarippa Milarippa was a powerful, magnificent, great Varden master who did not condemn and judge and prejudge other souls. Because he was a sinner, he could, instead of, people, humans are so quick to condemn and judge someone for the slightest flaw and to blow it all out of proportion and to just project black magic onto that person and condemn them forever. That judgmentalness is toxic. And he learned from having gone through being negative himself to not condemn God's creatures, other souls, and to believe in them. And his holy fire was even greater because he was deprived of heaven, light, sound, he was in the negative, so he experienced the polar opposite of spiritual freedom, and so he valued it more. And so his fire was even greater for God. But having a holy fire for Hure, God, it's like no matter what crosses your path, no matter how difficult or painful it is, the tests and the, and the things in life, that your fire for the Hure is so great that you will walk through walls to find it, that you will patiently endure during difficult times and not give up, that you will hold on, you know, like the side of the boat and not get washed away because you love the Hure and you trust it. Even when things don't appear to be going your way, or things don't appear to be going well. That holy fire is what pushes you to keep going and having resilience and having single-pointed single focus to not give up and, and to make it all the way, to make it all the way, to finish the journey to self-realization, God-realization, and Varden Mastership because it's only the ones that have the holy fire and stoke it in themselves who make it to Varden Mastership. Yeah, I guess it's whether one can keep that fire going and make it bigger. Uh, you know, um, stoking is important and you have to keep it going too. Yeah. Um, it was funny when I, one time you mentioned how I had the holy fire and I was like, what? I have the holy fire. <laughs> it was sort of like when you told me I had knowingness it was similar because um, <laughs> I didn't see it in myself. <laughs> um, it's just funny. Sometimes we don't notice these things in ourselves, but there are chilas who clearly have the holy fire. It's just a matter of can they stick to it? And can they uh, keep doing it, keep making it bigger?
because it, it the other part of this talk is the or discussion is healing the heart you know and the seminar which is about the secrets of spiritual healing I mean the holy fire is something that will clear the way you know it'll clear the way and so that you can do what God Hure wants you to do yes and one of the th one of the things that I noticed is um well I should say that it's not about the the um the heart chakra we go from the third from basically the third eye and above the the crown tisratil mm -hmm. um but there's an element of that this whole saying there's a, a saying said many places follow the heart it's almost like god put this spark of divine love this guidance within the heart and one of the things that i found was there were times when there were times when it felt as though I wanted to seem to want to let myself be doing what other people expect of me or want of me rather than following my heart. Not my human heart or the human self or the little self, the ego, but when I say the heart, I mean the, the God self, the true self, the eternal spark of God when you follow that heart and when I found that it was like there were moments where I was trying to just do what I was being told to do and I wasn't following the heart of what is in my eternal self and when I did that even more so following the eternal self it was just like pure joy pure enthusiasm, pure wonder. You know, it's like when you follow your heart to be closer to the Hure and dwell in its world more deeply, it's magnificent. When you follow your heart, <laughs> when you follow your heart to serve in ways that the Hure itself, not your mind, the Hure itself guides, it's magnificent. Uh -huh. um, I always thought, I always thought to myself that when someone does something out of obligation, then it's sort of like, it's sort of like almost not doing it, doing it half-heartedly. Unless they're doing it for God. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes you have to push yourself to do something that you don't yeah. necessarily want to do. I've done that many times. Yeah. yeah I mean, there is uh, like discipline, you know, there's also... Uh, bucking up and doing what God wants in some cases, yeah. but then, you know, like you're right, it's finding what lights your heart uh, spiritually, because um, you know our soul is always like as Alan G said, soul is a happy entity, and and that's our real self. Yes. So what is it that soul wants? It's you know if there's anything I've learned, it's that soul loves Hugh, soul loves Hugh Ray, and soul loves Hugh. And that's something I've learned from, interestingly, from helping animals to translate <laughs> from their bodies, just by chanting "hue." They were, they were ultra sensitive to it because they were their body was dying. Yes. And I learned that soul loves hue just because soul is so responsive to the hue sound. Hmm. That that reminds me of. Um, oh, sorry, I cut um, you. It's okay. Um, that reminds me of a time that Alan G. shared where he was in a satsang class when he was a young man. Oh. And there was a group of people sitting in a circle in satsang studying the discourse. And at one point they began to chant the Hugh chant. And they put love into it, chanting Hugh. Hugh. And then when they opened their eyes, they looked, and in the very center of the room was a tiny baby mouse. And it, and it was standing on its hind legs, <laughs> looking up, wide-eyed, um, listening to the huge chant with awe, like it was mm. like in, like it was in reverence with, it was just like listening, you know, like in awe. Mm. And then all of a sudden, when everyone opened their eyes and looked at it, it looked startled, <laughs> and then, quickly scurried under the couch <laughs> and away. But I thought that was very funny how um, 
how it was uh, it was uplifted and and in awe about hearing the huge chant and uh, being just a soul in this tiny body yeah i mean animals uh they don't overthink things so they they can feel it or at least some of them can and yeah, yeah. Um, it's a beautiful experiment if you have pets or <laughs> if you know any animals uh that could benefit but also any being who's dying would certainly respond to um which is another interesting thing but maybe this is off topic but um related to healing the heart a part of healing the heart relates to following the holy fire meaning many many times we have a choice between 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 having a moment where we are half-hearted and we don't find that holy fire for the hure mm. and then another choice of being more wholehearted and having more of a holy fire in that moment whatever it is whether it's doing our spiritual exercise with more divine love and personalizing it more so it's more exciting to us mm. or whether it's whether it's going through the day and practicing the master's presence or or chanting the zikar right. with more divine love and more effort it's like more holy fire yeah i think for everyone there's going to be some aspect of uh of ardhankar which which sparks that holy fire more you know some people they love to read i guess and they love uh, hearing about uh stories and masters, I love reading Vardhankar books. Or, and then there's other ways which is, you know, like putting more love into your spiritual exercises, which is a good idea. And, um, what were the other ways? Oh, uh, throughout the day you can do many exercises. I think yeah. the spiritual exercises is like pretty much um, the number one way to stoke yeah. that fire. Yeah. It's an expression of um, divine love. When when you do your spiritual practices, your spiritual disciplines for Vardhankar, it's like an expression of divine love. It's just like if you spend time to to feed the lo the lower body food and water and rest, you're giving love so that it can stay healthy. And likewise, likewise when somebody feeds their their friends and family divine love and attention and time it makes those relationships healthy and and grow and and similarly when we spend love and time and effort into doing spiritual exercises and doing the bard and contemplation of the holy works and spiritual practices we're feeding our pure self soul we are helping that to flourish and grow and that is a part of that holy fire to love the hure we're showing and demonstrating to the hure that we love it it's a living expression of that mm, so service is another way to express that holy fire too yes yeah, love of service yes service is very important spiritually there are some that service is just a side hobby but throughout my life, I've known individuals who it's like it wasn't a side hobby to them. To them, it was like they had a holy fire to serve the Hure. And it wasn't just something that they did like, you know, an hour a week on a weekend when they have a little time off. Mm -hmm. It was it was like their life calling, mm -hmm. their their joy, their life calling like they, you know, want to live and breathe the path and service and so with me personally uh, you know i had i had i would always be friends with people of this sort and so we would do i would do a street table every friday in manhattan and we would do one of my friends did street fairs and he did hundreds of street fairs in the summer and hundreds of people would come up to his table and I had another friend, he had a project, he wanted to put a, a, a spiritual uh, book from the High Path in every single library in the bur five boroughs of New York, which, mm -hmm. and my goal was uh, colleges too. 
And, and another thing was like uh, training. Like we would spend time training other chilas how to do these things for themselves. And giving talks, like public talks, like you know, at expos and other places, like every week. And I did postering three times a week. I would run out to Staten Island, I'd run out to the Bronx, I'd run out to Brooklyn and put flyers in stores and supermarkets and other places. It was snow, rain, sunshine, whatever. I think part of it is when you have the holy fire to serve God, you it's not like a, a side hobby, it's a whole way of being. It's it's like it's like somebody who has a calling in life. They feel like they for they want to be like a a doctor, like their father, the best doctor mm -hmm. they can possibly be. And when it's a calling, you you put your whole heart into it, and and you live and breathe the path. And and having the holy fire to serve is you know if somebody is an area rep, they they it's a joy because they know that they're serving the hure. When they go out and give an introductory talk, they know, um, you know, some chilas when they when they do satsang class, and and they invite other people to participate in their satsang class, that this is a, an enormous thing. They are giving divine love to other chilas through satsang. Just meeting meeting with other chilas to just you know gossip and complain or talk about what's wrong with life or what's wrong with Vardenkar is not serving the high path, but actually going out and having a satsang class where they're discussing the satsang discourse together, mm -hmm. or going out in the community and having an introductory talk on Vardenkar. These are different ways of stoking the holy fire in oneself to be this pure channel of the Margatma. And it's a, you know, it's a calling, like a life calling. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you and Alanji did a, a talk already on something like this on YouTube where you were discussing forms of service in Vardakur. Yeah. And um, I think it's true if you find uh, certain forms of serving the Hure that, that you love, then that can make a huge difference because um, it becomes almost a part of your identity as soul. Yes. You know, this is what kind of soul I am. I serve this way, you know. But I, I have to mention this too. When I was first beginning on the path and I was like a second initiate and a uh, new initiate, I didn't pick and choose. Mm -hmm. um, like, I didn't just say, oh, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to do right. it like once a week. It was something where one of the things that I went in with me to myself is that Whatever it is, I, I need to learn it from the Varden. The Varden is going to lead me in different things, and I have to do mm -hmm. because... And I realized later that all of those different things that I did were, were preparing me for something. I was being prepared for, for years, for, for almost several decades. And had I been picking and choosing, well, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to do that, then, then I would not have been able to be as prepared. You know, like some of the things I did were things I thought would be boring. You know, like I, <laughs> different things. I was in the film and television, the, the high path film and television circle. I was in the theater circle. Mm -hmm. I was in the financial planning committee. Right. I manned the front desk. It's like I didn't pick and choose. I did whatever the Varden wanted me to do. No matter how lowly or no matter how big and scary it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. That makes sense. Um, not picking and choosing is yeah. important. <laughs> yeah. But um, the holy fire, the holy fire is, is important no matter where you are on your journey. Whether you're an acolyte, a chula initiate, higher initiate, mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, yeah. Can hear a lot of um, uh, Spanish music, Spanish music. <laughs> yeah. playing outside. Uh, as again, we're in Peru. <laughs> yeah, I guess people have leanings, you know. So um, it was interesting in one of Alan G's books. He was asking, was it Rebazar or Yavo? I don't, I don't know which book. <laughs> I don't. I get them confused sometimes. One of the ancient masters, he was asking, doesn't soul 
have to uh, have a lot of experiences before it will have leanings, you know, before it will lean this way or that way. But the master told them, like, uh, this is one of the mysteries of Hiure, is that soul has uh, some kind of unique uniqueness. That soul is unique. Yes. And uh, I found that interesting. It is a mystery. I mean, from our human mind, we can't understand that. But each soul is different and has its own path. So the holy fire will definitely look different for different people. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. It, it's exciting. It, it's like um, it's like when each soul unfolds to more of its true God self. It's like opening a pre a present. Like the hero is opening a present. Oh look, it's finally done. You know, <laughs> this one's done, and the present opens up, and it's this brilliant spark of God that is sharing the hure with love and being this magnificent channel in ways that all its incarnations led up to is a pinnacle and mm. and you're giving a gift to the hure when you when you reach higher states of consciousness because service because reaching different higher initiations itself is an act of loving the hure and returning returning to it is loving the hure so yeah. i think that was a beautiful, beautiful yeah. flow. Is there anything else you want to share, sir? Just participating in any aspect of Artakar is loving the Hue. And yes. Artakar needs participants. <laughs> yeah. I guess, um, I mean, you know, when Achila is starting out, it's receiving more, more or less than, more so than giving, I guess. But receiving is also a way of giving. Yeah, that's you know, true. saying that I accept this with gratitude, and there are sincere chilas who who love the path who are grateful, and um, that's also a way of serving. But so true. Oh my God, that's such an important point. Um, one of an area of enormous service is being grateful. Yeah. There was one chila who um, I used to call. I call different chilas who had this buoyant, light-hearted attitude this gratitude and just his this person's gratitude was so uplifting their gratitude for the master their gratitude for the path their gratitude to act to actually be able to out of body travel because when they started they couldn't their attitude was an act of service an act of just living the path and it was like a holy fire and it was an act of love Be for I mean for me personally it was meaningful because when sometimes when there were challenges their joyful heart their gratitude for Varden was like um, another bright light <laughs> you could say yeah. of the Hure the Hure's uh, Varden light and sound and it wasn't that they it wasn't that they were like putting lots of flyers in the street or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just their divine love was an act of service. Right. There's so many ways uh, to serve. <laughs> um, and just doing your exercises uh, with uh, some gusto is uh, <laughs> is also loving the Hebrew. That's and true. I think that's yeah. a beautiful thing in Vardhankar is there's so many ways to give love back. Yes. And, um, yes, when you put more divine love. Uh, Alan G once said, there was a Chila that once approached Alan G and the Chila said that that they had a problem. That their problem was that they found their pottery class ignited their heart and interested them more than Barton Carr. They couldn't really find themselves motivation. And Alan G. said to this Chila that, that when they do their spiritual exercise, even if it's difficult to motivate themselves, when they do their spiritual exercise or when they do their Barton reading or when they do whatever disciplines for the high path, that they are literally showing the Hure that they care about it, that they love it. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, it's sort of like we go through so many incarnations where the negative power ingrains in us or teaches us to 
love the things of this world, to prioritize enjoying things from the human level. But we have to retrain ourselves to love more the things of God, the Hure. We have to train ourselves, retrain ourselves to open our heart to enjoying our spiritual exercise more, personalizing it, making it fun for us, you know, making it more meaningful for us. It, um, <laughs> one Sheila who had difficulty with that, he was very um, gifted mentally. And one of the things Alan G. recommended for him was he said, in past lives you got bored, you left. You know, with light, with light C, you left. You found you found other other te mental teachers, and he said the way that you can not get bored and leave the path is you make it more interesting to yourself. You make it more interesting to your unique talents. Mm -hmm. So you like you like mental stuff. So yeah, you know, when you read a book, make notes in the margins of mm -hmm. things that fascinate you. Underline things. Highlight things. Have journals. You know, with with fun spiritual exercises mm -hmm. and ideas and. You know, um, stoke the fire for what is meaningful to you. And for me, personally, some of that has been coming to me more lately. And it makes the path come alive more when you follow your heart and do things, not just because you're supposed to do them, but because something lights your heart. And... Um, because then that, that opens doors, because maybe the hue ray is whispering through your heart. Right. <laughs> it's a bit hot. Yes, I'm very hot. Um, and uh, also, by uh, cultivating our understanding of the path can also make it more of a need. You know, because there might be part of us that's putting Vardhankar on the sidelines, because... Uh, some belief, like a belief that spirituality is separate from your personal life or something like that. Mm -hmm. But when you change your understanding over time, then you can make it more of a need. And when you develop a stronger need for something, you start to excel at it more. You know, yeah. you gain a greater knowingness, or you gain a greater holy fire. Yes. The holy fire for God. You're right. Yeah. So that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.